Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boosts every single day. Rudo, Jesse, and AJ coming at you as Nazem Kadri is officially the Central Division's representative as the last man in vote for the All-Star Game. Not only that, but apparently... Kadri got so many votes, he was more than double the next player in the Central Division. So I think all of us will agree it's well-deserved, but good to actually see it happen. Sure hope he can play defense. <laughs> True. They have the Central bringing Kale McCarr as their singular defender. To That's the all you need. <laughs> Just him. He's going to yeah. play every shift. And with Bedner coaching, they could put whoever they want from a division rival back there and be like, sorry, bud. Like... <laughs> Throw Kirill Kaprizov back there. Tough. Just just watch Minnesota fans melt out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll talk about Nas a little bit more in the All-Star game. I, I did want to get one opinion first, because AJ, you and I talked about it on the post-game show um, with no update from NHL player safety today. Jesse, I'm curious what your thoughts were on the Greenway situation. <clears throat> yeah, uh, no, I, I'm... I, my thought is I'm disappointed that we haven't seen um, Department of Player Safety, Safety come down today and say that there's going to be a hearing for it. From at, at full speed, it looked like a couple guys going through the crease and someone got knocked into. Uh, when you watch that replay, especially from the angle behind the net, looks pretty obvious to me that that he uh, he leans into to Kemper that he created that contact there and. Uh, it, it, it looked intentional to me. Now, was he necessarily maybe trying to throw, you know, an arm into the back of his head? That part, I don't know, but it looked like he was pretty in, intent on making contact. And um, again, with the benefit of replay, I think it's disappointing that we haven't seen anything beyond just a two minute goalie interference um, in, in the moment looked malicious to me. Um, and, and I thought it was a shame that the abs lost, Darcy Kemper for the rest of the game and Jordan Greenway got to participate in the playoff or in the power play that his team got at the end of the second period. Um, that's where I'm at with it. it. It looked pretty intentional in my opinion. Especially obviously it's a concussion related issue. So it's going to be a day by day thing for Kemper when he feels better, he feels better, but right. it, it does not feel good that the Avs are staring down a back to back that they, there's a good chance they'll right. have to play without Darcy Kemper and Jordan Greenway is going to go play games for Minnesota. Right. Right. Yeah. Jor- Jordan Greenway is going to play, uh, you know, tomorrow and the Avs are heading into a back to back that they'll be without, you know, one of their, one of their two goalies more than likely. So, um, it, it's, it's disappointing. Uh, he he really didn't even try to like deny it much after the game either. Uh, you know, Jordan Greenway owned, you know, yep. Skated through the crease and I clipped him. Yep. And that was, that was kind of like what he had to say. And it's like, Holy shit. So disappointing, but yeah. What can you do at this point? Unfortunately is what it is. So Hunter Miska was already on the taxi squad. Um, that looks like that's it. Um, just be Miss Good and Frankie. Yeah, I'm just looking at the trans. Sure, <laughs> looking at yeah. transactions and nothing else has happened. Not yeah, yet, I mean, least. I mean, if 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 you feel pretty comfortable that at worst, cat, uh, excuse me, Kemper is going to be, um, you know, he'll he'll miss these next couple. Then I don't know. Maybe you just roll Frankie in back-to-back games. Uh, yes, and, I'm playing Francois in both games. I'm not playing Hunter Mesko. And and just saying, you know, we hope that we get out of this all right in terms of health. Um, that that to me is maybe the only reason why you would maybe play Miska against LA, which I think is the first game, is if you're trying to make sure that you don't overextend Francois. Um, but. I don't necessarily see them doing that, but if they went with that thought process, I wouldn't love it, but I'd at least get it. Yeah. It's <laughs> you don't want to end up in a situation where both of your goalies are hurt again. I mean, this is, this is like 
the exact scenario that you're like, boy, I sure hope this doesn't happen when Jonas right. Johansson got claimed off of waivers. Right, right. And now we're maybe seeing it like play out twice. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, disappointing that we haven't had any word on it. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm bummed that Jordan Greenway is going to kind of get to, you know, walk away scot-free, but yeah. Um, Unfortunately, is is the situation. Well, is what it is. On the more positive note of the day, Nazem Kadri getting to go to the All Star game. Yeah, like genuinely a cool thing here. Yep. <clears throat> this is not a guy. This is. It's not like Kadri's going to his fifth All Star game or something like McKinnon. Yeah, like, this is his first. Like a big shrug where you're, like, or you know, Miko goes to like his what third or fourth. Yeah, player, right. right. Like. Kadri is in the middle of like the ultimate contract year. Yep. <laughs> to the point where we're all like, oh my God, he's gonna get he's gonna get paid, but he's having such a ridiculous season that I think everybody's gonna walk out of it and be like, Well, that was definitely yep. a career year. No way he's repeating that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but-, but I I do love that I do love that he's just getting that recognition because he was so villainized by the nhl last year and i mean look like it was a bad hit on justin falk he deserved to be suspended for it but the way that it went down and the length of it and the really weird like nazim kadri only suspension scale yeah uh it 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 felt bad and it was like Coming into this year, you know, and he didn't have a very good year coming into the season. Like, you remember how Avs fans felt about him? They weren't super high on like, it. Like, there were people who are in this chat right now who have commented who wanted to get rid of that guy. Yep. Well, and, and, and we're like, and we're like, he's a bum. He's washed. You got to get rid of him. And it's like, now, now here's, he's here's the All Star game. Here is the other thing to remember, though. Like, that was the other thing that made the the suspension that much shittier. Was like. He was having a bad, if not a bad season, like he was going through long stretches of not scoring, not picking up points. And that was what, you know, th- th- that was what I feel like made the suspension feel that much shittier was it was like, ah, you can tell he's just frustrated and he did something dumb because he's frustrated. Yeah. And, and I- I'm with you. Like there were people that were calling for him to be traded and it's like, well, pump the brakes. Like he's still a really good player with, you know, with, with a lot of upside in that position, but people were rightfully down on him. And then, yeah, he gets himself suspended. Yeah, sure. He's not, like, he's not, he's not in the Vegas series. Like I said, I, I'm with you. I, I, I think the people that were the, everyone's reaction to poor play is trade someone, which is just so funny. It's, it's always like make a giant decision that you can't right. really do. I love right, right, right. The, uh, the converse of that, where this year, instead of hearing that conversation, everyone's like, the Avs have to find a way to give him $8 million and keep right, him. And it's right. like, nope, right. they sure don't. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and so, like, it's, it's, it's nice to see for him because not only was he kind of vilified by the rest of the league, but this fan base was down on him. Then he went and did the thing that everyone was afraid he would do when they acquired him. Uh, and so just to see him come back and, you know, we were talking about it when he was put on the last man in with Roman Yossi being the other one on there, we all kind of thought, mm, maybe there's your natural kind of fit. Second defenseman. Yeah. I mean, based on everything I saw on Twitter, I felt pretty comfortable that it was going to be Kadri. I think abs fans felt slighted. I think abs players kind of felt slighted. And for me, it's it's this really cool thing because you go back a couple years. This isn't <laughs> this isn't the first time in you know in a long time that the Avs have had three players at the All Star game. They sent Miko, uh, Mac, and Landy a few years ago. What's <clears throat> cool about this is that was such like a natural. Oh yeah, that's the big top line. Yeah. You know, they're they're the big guns for Colorado. This is, you know. Three players, two of them are different from they were a couple years ago. You got Kale McCarr now. You have Nazem Kadri now. Just kind of speaks to the depth of this team. And to me, it makes it even cooler that Bednar is getting to go because the other part of this this speaks to is just the team as a whole. That in you know two All-Star games apart, I believe, you're sending 
five unique players and a coach. It just, I mean, just kind of speaks to the volumes of where this team's at. We spent the entire offseason talking about how the Avs took a noticeable step back in talent over the offseason, how they had lost too much, and the guys coming back were going to struggle to repeat who they were last year. And then 36 games in, they're 25, 8, and 3. Yep. One point better at the 35 game mark than they were last year. So they're on a 120 point pace right now. Yep. Like they're just, they, and, and it's on the back of these guys who are playing just unbelievably. It's in the case of Kadri, he currently sits at 35 assists in the 33 games he's played. Before this year, his career high in assists was 30. He has over half the season left, and he's already beaten his career high in assists. Yeah. <laughs> like, and for my money, there's still going to be a cold snap here. Oh, sure. He'll go cold for a 15 or even 20 game stretch, but. Certainly compared to where he is. I mean, there's no he can't. If you keep this up, he's a 115-point player. Like, well, and that's, that's kind of where you have to wonder, like, what's coming for the abs because he's not alone. I mean, Landis Cog's at 37 points in 28 games. Yep. You know, like, we've slowly found the Chushkin was a point-per-game guy through, like, 15 games. And now slowly it's drifted started off there. a little bit. Yep. So I just don't. Uh, you wonder. You wonder what it looks like. You know, is it like the JT Comfer? You don't even notice me. I stop making an impact. I have done nothing to contribute to this hockey team in three weeks. Kind of cold snap. Or is it just like, or is it the puck isn't going in, but he's still doing good things? Type yeah, of like is it you know, or is it like he has like five points in ten games, kind of cold snap? Yeah, where it's like this is totally respectable. It's just yeah. not actual insanity. It's, it's <laughs> not what it was earlier, but for your yeah. second line center, every single team in the NHL would sign up for really, really close to this. Yep. So, so it's been it's been a lot of fun to watch, and genuinely like. I'm thrilled that he got it because I just didn't think like people don't like Nazem Kadri. And yep. I I think that sucks. And I think that him getting rewarded for this. I'm just I'm just really happy that like it felt like justice was served on this one thing. This one like really ultimately Small, meaningless. All irrelevant, like, but <laughs> gets to go to the all-star game. But like for a guy, for a guy who's never in that conversation, the only way he would have ever been in that conversation before is as a team rep. Like Clayton Keller's gotten multiple All Star games entirely because of he was he's an Arizona he guy, Arizona, yeah. Never because he's been an All Star. Yep. So you know, I th- I just think it's cool that Kadri gets to go, and he gets to go on a team that sh- that legitimately could have sent six guys to the All Star game. Yep. You could have made an easy argument for six guys. Yep. Definitely could have sent Miko. Probably a good chance you could have sent Gabe too. Yeah. So. I mean, just looking at Landeskog, you they've got they've got all these guys who are at the top of in, in scoring. And then you have oh Devon Taves is just hanging out there, giving you, you know, from a fancy stats and uh traditional stats, nothing short of elite production. Yep. It's it's always funny when you look at the uh, the box scores after games and you see a dude who had one point that night and his points per game average went down. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, damn, <laughs> that's tough. Yeah. It's a tough sell. Uh, all right. We are brought to you all by Breckenridge Brewery. Go get yourself uh, Avalanche Amber Ale to drink while you're watching the Avs games. It's always a, a great time. Or, of course, you can find any of their other amazing flavors at a local liquor store near you. Use the Breck Beer Locator online get hooked up with that or come on down to the dnvr bar where you can get eight different kinds on tap there and then when you're done with that you know it goes great with beer all right blaze Blaze would say the kearney just burrito down at the dnvr bar dude he will not (laughs) shut up about that thing (laughs) i love blaze and i'm getting tired of hearing about this carnitas burrito (laughs) but 
while that's a good recommendation, also check out Sexy Pizza. You can go get yourself some amazing New York-style pizza right here in Colorado. Recommended by all the East Coasters in the company, by the way. They recommend it. It's the good stuff. AJ is is one of those weird people whose favorite pizza is just plain cheese pizza. Yeah. And uh, he, he gave them the thumbs up, from what yep. I can tell. So Yeah, it's good. It's good pizza. You know, it's not the uh, best in Denver, but it's good pizza. You know when a purist like AJ says it's good, that it's the good stuff. Yeah, I would I'd recommend getting actual toppings on the pizza, but you know, if you're a cheese person, do you? That's there are funny. plenty of toppings that I like. <laughs> I'll eat plenty of pizzas with toppings on them. Allegedly, it's happened. I've, never, I've never seen it. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't think you would have actually. Yeah, we don't ever don't... really eat pizza together. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Cheese pizza is not like I used to work with this dude who hated cheese pizza because there's nothing on it. It's like, all right, that's I, a bad take. Yeah. Right, right. That's hor- It's a horrific take because cheese pizza is amazing. I just, it's interesting when it's your favorite pizza. Yeah. There's stuff that makes it better. It's good already. But yeah. anyway, um, there's a lot of there are a lot of times where I've just been because it wasn't like that. I like like so Chicken. many. So many people, I was a pepperoni guy for ever and ever and ever. And I'll still, I love pepperoni now. Uh, you throw like a pizza at me. Sure, I'm all about that. Um, but I, I don't know. Uh, over over time, it just sort of became like, yeah, you know what I'm really craving? It's just like a, just, just a cheese pizza. All right. Chicken just fingers it. or chicken fingers, that last comment. Those are like, that's my food if... You had to pick only one food that you could eat forever. It'd be chicken fingers because I, I would have known that about Jesse. Day. Yeah, I would have one hundred percent been able to guess that. I would not know what Rudo's food is. Well, it's, that's just a food that, like, for me, because if you're picking a food that you have to eat forever, that's not necessarily like your number one food, but that's sure. a food that I could eat. I mean, every how, day. How like pigeonholed am I? Because if I say burritos, like. Does that mean I have to eat an actual burrito every day, or can I just have like the steak from the burrito for certain meals? No. No, I think you gotta. You gotta yeah, have I an think... actual burrito. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be a burrito then. Yeah, that's a that's a tough thing to eat every day. Well, that's yeah. the thing with chicken tenders is that you can change it up. You go honey mustard one day, or ranch the next right. day, or barbecue the next day, or you know whatever. Ver- versatile as hell, fucking food. Well, and that's where that's where pizza also shines because you can put so many different things on it to completely change the pizza. So yep. you Preach. know, like I as Preach. I've gotten older, the red sauce gives me heartburn, so I've started switching into white pizzas a lot more. You know what? There's a whole lot of white pizza out there that's really, really, really good, <laughs> but it's a totally different like pizza experience than a than a red sauce pizza. And now there are places that let you do like the uh, uh, like barbecue sauce. As the base, and as as the and it's just like oh my gosh, Bojo's oh. Bojo's has one that is white pizza, but it's ranch. Oh yeah, the, that's another thing that um, <laughs> oh. there, there, there's a lot of places that have started doing the ranch base. And God, I know more about pizza than I should, just because of who my best friend is. I, I was gonna say, you know a lot about pizza for someone whose favorite pizza is cheese. Pizza. Yeah, no, no. So my best friend in the world is uh, the world's largest pizza fan, and you know how everybody always says that. Oh, he loves this more than just trust his superpower. You could send him a picture of a pizza from anywhere, and he will know where it's from. It's. <laughs> <laughs> fucking weird dude <laughs> so that's that's the only reason why i've had to listen to a lot of talk about pizza over the years so <laughs> okay. it's the only it's the only reason why i can get in all these different conversations all right great well go let's, check let's, out let's sexy pizza and uh, we'll get into the second period of the dnvr avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings kings sports book so kadri sits in the top five in scoring, mm-hmm. we talked about this a little bit the other week, but we kind of just evolved into what we think the All Star Game should be. Totally, I want. I love to... the Young Stars game idea too. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Love it. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the actual NHL 
all-star game rosters, especially now that we have all the last man in votes here. Are there any strong feelings? We talked about not loving Talbot getting in last time, but are there any other significant He's not even their starter there? anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not even the best goalie on the Minnesota Wild roster, let alone one of the two best goalies in the Central Division. <laughs> You're no argument from me on Talbot, yeah. right? But looking at it, guys like Marchand don't get in. Uh, you look you look down at some other places, Crosby not getting in. How how do you guys feel about these these rosters on the whole? So they're white. They're too small. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's 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 really kind of what it comes down to for me. I think like I, I was happy that Troy Terry got in. I was I, I was happy that uh, it was Jake Gensel and Steven Stamkos. Not because I particularly like those players, but they're they're skilled players who who will hopefully make you know for some added fun. Um, but wouldn't you uh, think? Wouldn't wouldn't you rather an all star game? Wouldn't you rather have Sidney Crosby and Artemi Panarin? Oh, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. And but, this is why I'm like, they're, they're, this is why I think they're too small. No, no, no. And, and and what I'm saying is, I agree with you. They're they're too small. I'd like to see them be bigger. I think the people they have on them are are fine. Yeah, like I think the players you the have right don't. Right, with, with the exception of people, in this, <sighs> I, like I feel bad shitting on Adam Pellet because like he didn't do this, but like. That's not an all-star game type guy. Yeah, and I regardless think of the year that he's having, Matt Barzell <laughs> is an all-star game guy where you go and you want right. to see skills. You want to see right. – like Adam Pellick's not – what's Adam Pellick going to do in the skills competition? Like pass the puck during the accuracy? Right. I'll bet, like, you, that's, I'll bet you that's what they'll have him do. They'll have him as part of the relay as, as the puck passer. Yeah, let me tell you. It's not something I would trust him with. <laughs> and uh, Just personally. So I, th- I think for the most part, the rosters are fine, but uh, I, I agree with AJ. I'd like to see them. I, I just like to see them change the format. I think the three on three thing was fun a few years ago uh, when it was kind of a new idea, but I think it's just gotten a little stale. Um, and I think when you construct the rosters like this, you just end up, you know, leaving out a bunch of people that would be, especially this is the first year. I'm assuming the all-star game will be on ESPN. Like, it just it, it would have been great for them to stack these rosters with the best top tier yeah. players in the league and not totally, man. But also, <laughs> like, we talked about, and I know we've already gotten into this, uh, but what's 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 your guys' favorite part of any all star game? The skills. the skills, yeah, the home run derby, skills. right? Yep. For baseball, right? Yep. Everybody loves the home run derby, and in and in Japan, they have like outfielders who throw, you know, who line up and they throw they from the outfield the into, the, home plate. Yeah, yeah. into the trash can at home plate. Yeah. <laughs> like they show off skills, you know, Hey, these guys can actually do these, these crazy things. Uh, one of my favorite things about the pro bowl as a kid was the quarterback skills competition. The, all the top quarterbacks went out yeah, there and, dude. Yep, and like, sick. hit the moving targets and do all this different stuff, you know? And it was just like, Holy shit. These guys are so good. Yep. And, and nobody cares about the actual game anymore. It's been forever since any of the All Star games mattered. You know, the the baseball one was the only one that ever used to truly matter across the sports. It's been a very long and time. And ever mattering was dumb. Um, but like at this point, it's just like just show off your skills. Just show off how talented these guys are. It doesn't matter if this stuff applies to games or not. Just show off what you guys can do. Just show, like, you guys have world-class puck skills. Like, yep. tr- a guy like Trevor Zegras is made for this. Should yep. 100% be yeah. there and should get to do crazy shit. Just go off for yep. a couple hours and enjoy it, for sure. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, the bunt-off in the KBO. <laughs> yeah, they have the bunt They have the bunt off where they uh, you have to bunt to, like, certain certain areas and you get points and it's dude it's awesome just to have a little bit of fun and and show off the parts of the game that you want to show off right it's not the idea of a game where you have the best players in the world but none of them are trying that hard it's just not very enticing right yeah i just the whole process like i i think it's a cool 
I think it's a cool thing, but they should scrap the games. Like yep. the skills, two days of skill stuff, uh, a fan fest um, where you get to like line up and then they have to, you know, they have like a full day where they have to hang out with fans and, uh, you know, do a media obligation, I guess. Like, well, I, I think, I think that that's, I think that's the cool stuff that, that they should lean into is the fan experience part of it. Well, Not the it's, game itself. The game itself, the, whatever. The, the idea about the all-star game, in my opinion, especially with a sport, like, like there's a reason the NFL does the pro ball pro bowl in the middle of the playoffs when not even all the players like, cause they don't give a sh- like, like the NFL doesn't need the pro bowl. A league like the NHL needs the all-star game. You need the all-star game to be successful and you need it to be viewed by a lot of people. I, I mentioned the Kendall coin Schofield thing a couple years ago or from a couple of years ago uh, on a show last week. Cause like you, you look at all the attention that women's hockey got for a week yeah. When she, you know, when she went out and did that and, you know, she was on Good Morning America and she was on Sports Center, and, and now that's led, you know, that led to her doing um, color commentary for, I believe it was for the wild. And then right after that, you saw a bunch of the national um, outlets adding females to the broadcast and stuff. And that's just a small example. The NHL, you know, let alone women's hockey needs to be doing stuff like that that gets eyeballs on the top players in your sport doing amazing things. And I just would love to see the all-star weekend turned into a, a celebration of hockey and high skill and talent. And uh, if, if you need to keep some kind of game, sure. Find a way to work it in there. But I think two days of skills and yeah, big fan fest uh, would be, would, would be the way to go and, and it'd get a lot more attention on the league in my right. opinion, which is what I, I you're mean- trying to do. I love the concept of how are you getting new eyes on this, right? Because yeah. if you're bringing in people who enjoy the women's game, if you're bringing in fans and, and events beyond just hockey, like get other big athletes involved in these events. You see baseball bring in quarterbacks and all sorts of other people. They have the, the slayer softball game. Yeah, exactly. That nobody watches. Yeah, yeah. But, but they get all those people involved in, in the weekend, right? So it's part of the event to get other people watching it. And and right now who watches the NHL all-star game? The, the fans of the league barely watch it. Anyone who's a new fan has probably already experienced the NHL to some extent. It's, it's why they bring a, a player from every team, right? To be like, Hey, look, little kid, this is your local team's guy at the all-star game. And it's like, okay, right. that's, that's nice. But that was probably already going to be an NHL fan. How are you bringing in new people? So. Well, and, and and again, if you if you just were to do it with what we've talked about, you know, a couple times on the last week, if you just made it a skills, then yeah, you could have a representative. You could have two representatives from every team. Yep. Fuck it, you know, who, you know, bring bring one player and one goalie at least from every team. I mean, you do whatever you want if you're expanding the weekend like that. Um, and and it's just it it just ups your the odds of having you know. Uh, uh, you know, a couple highlight real moments that that make it on Sports yeah. Center and stuff like that, that that get people to tune in. Wow, that was amazing! Wow, that was really cool. Um, and, and so that's that's what I think this weekend should be more about. It's awesome that Kadri got to go in, given the way the current format is. I think it's a great validation. You know, this is a guy who, unless something bizarro happens, you know, he's not going to win the Art Ross. He's not going to win the Rocket Richard, anything like that. Um, but right now he's up in that conversation with those guys who will probably be there at the end of the season. Um, it's a nice validation for him. Um, given the way that everything's going, happy to see it. Glad he got in. Um, but yeah, would definitely like to see the NHL adjust this format so that in the future, someone who's having a year like Kadri doesn't have to get down to this last man in stuff. Yep. Agreed on that front. It's, you, you see the chat throwing out a billion great ideas for the all-star game too. It's the NHL could do yeah. just about anything, but what they're doing. And it would when, be when a YouTube chat section has better ideas than you guys are implementing in reality. You're struggling. You just <laughs> got problems. <laughs> All right. Well, the YouTube, yeah, that's chat, a great idea. <laughs> the YouTube chat section can also maybe make more money than some over at DraftKings Sportsbook. 
Get on it today. Go hit up DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up to a new account. And not only do you get amazing odds boosts every single day, but also when you sign up right now, all you have to do is bet $5 on any team to win in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, and you win $280 in free bets if the team you picked wins. So sign up with DNVR. Pick a good bet. I'm uh, who who's who's the best bet in the NFL in the divisional round? The the Packers or something? I don't know. I don't know football very well. Uh, if you know football, the Chiefs last couple of years. They there you go. So if yeah, you know football but... better than me, go go pick a team that's about to get a free win. Get two hundred and eighty dollars to mess around with on DraftKings, which then you can go bet on bet it all on Kale McCarr to win the Norris and and enjoy that money that you're about to make. Doesn't matter where you go with it. Yeah, make, doesn't make, doesn't even matter that the odds at this point probably aren't very good. The, he's the favorite by like pretty significant margin, but it, it's still positive money. Uh, anyway, if you're not a new customer, you can still get in on a bunch of action with the same game parlays. Uh, you can jump in with that on football. They also have them in baseball, hockey, and I believe basketball too, but I haven't really checked with the basketball side of things. But tons of awesome stuff. When you get with the parlays, you get better odds. You don't have to bet on tough bets to make either you could t- you could have taken the abs against arizona to win and the over and that would have gotten you pretty close to even money betting on a game that was like minus 650 for the abs to win alone so good way to to better your odds on that one D- download the DraftKings sportsbook app now and use that dnvr promo code to get the 56 to 1 odds in the nfl divisional round it must be 21 or older colorado on the other terms restrictions conditions apply DraftKings sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the nfl and of course if you have a problem call 1-800-522-4700 all right we're also brought to you by maybe you need a little bit of extra money to put into DraftKings Sportsbook. Maybe you're looking for a job. The Ball Corporation is currently hiring. You can go on over to their website, jobs.ball.com, and search for Golden to find job opportunities at their Golden plant. Right now, they're hiring a product technician. If you want to read the full description, again, go online or text Golden to 77222. They're paying a competitive wage of $27.39 per hour with the potential for raises at 6, 12, and 18 months and even the ability to move up into higher roles in the company they also do a great job of looking out for the ecosystem they have programs including satellites that track resources across the globe so they do a bunch of good stuff there also give pto benefits insurance stuff like that be sure to go check them out today if you're looking for a job third period of the dnvr avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings sportsbook we're just going to say this because it's news, and then we're going to be done with it and and move on, okay? Uh, the NHL is adjusting their COVID protocols beginning February 3rd to match essentially what the NFL and NBA are doing now, meaning no testing of asymptomatic players and continuing on to help prevent giant swaths of players getting put on COVID and having to suspend games. So, yes, that's a thing that's happening. Yeah, they're doing it because you're you're about to go into the you're, you're going into your safety net here. Yep. You, you know your your All Star break or excuse me your Olympic break was a safety net to reschedule games. As you're looking down the road here, you say we don't have a lot of room left on the schedule. I mean, you're 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 because of the Olympic break, you're already going to the end of April when your season normally ends by the second week. Um, the NHL is just essentially out of runway. There's a roadmap for it in the other leagues, so they are adopting it as well. Um, <laughs> I do love that the NHL can't make a decision on something until another league does it. Until someone else does it, yep. <laughs> and then they're just – because it's normally the NBA where they're like, we just follow everything they do. What are you guys right. doing? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so – they, they, the NBA is run by a really good commissioner in, in Adam Silver. <laughs> Because imagine, imagine if they were taking their cues from fucking baseball and Rob Manfred Just driving their game into the ground. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you end up uh, with four period hockey games. Oh God. Yeah. Playing so no, seven on seven. Uh, definitely, Sorry, uh, de- de- definitely something that you know. There's going to be mixed mixed opinions on, but uh, this yeah. was something that the league it was necessary for them <clears> to be able to to get through the season, in my opinion. 
it's done. Well, it's not technically done. They think the Players Association still needs to vote on it. But anyway, moving on for our purposes. Don't have anything to really say about it today, but it's expected that tomorrow the makeup schedules through February will be coming out. So keep your eyes peeled for info on that. I'm sure we'll talk about it on the on the pregame and postgame show for the abs, things like that. Um, yeah, other than that, taking a look at uh, at things coming up for the Colorado Avalanche here. Their schedule in the immediate is the the Ducks and Kings back to back, which they could be dealing with uh, with two Frankie games there. But what do, how do you guys feel about this next next stretch of games? You have Anaheim and LA on the back to back. Then you have Montreal at home this weekend, followed by Chicago and Boston. And then I think it's Buffalo and Arizona. It's Chicago again, and then Chicago. Buffalo. Yeah. Okay. So the schedule's really soft. We've talked about this before. Um, this is where they need to really they need to put the hammer down. Yeah. And again, like, does it look any different? And I would say the only thing that has to change the the results are exactly what you want. Just stop going into overtime, stop getting into shootouts, yep. uh, and stop trailing games. Just these are bad right. hockey teams. Yep. Go beat them. Yep. Stop giving up two goal leads. Yep. Uh, I think that sums it up pretty well for the, for the next stretch of hockey. Well. Four and one, is that a realistic ask? Read the teams off again. Uh, Anaheim, L.A., Chicago, Boston, Chicago, and we're, we're past four and one, but Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously what I'm about to say here is like a duh. But like you'd like to see him get points in all those games. To me, those teams that you just read off, those, those are all very winnable games for the abs. Boston obviously is in their own fight. Um, but for me, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think four and one at, at minimum is unrealistic at all. Um, I, for me, I, you know, I think you'd like to see him get get points in all of those. There's no reason why they shouldn't. Um, now, obviously, if you're without Kemper for any level of extended amount of time, that maybe makes it harder for sure. Changes your expectations a little bit, um, but. Th- th- with the way that they're playing right now, the, the this next stretch of games here leading up to the all-star break, I mean, we talked about it last week, and I'm, you know, I'm just repeating a lot of what AJ just said, but you want to see them bank those points so that if you are getting into situations near the end of the season where, you know, Darcy Kemper is a little banged up, okay, you don't feel so bad about giving him an extra night off or, or you know, whatever. Um You'd, you'd like to see them now they're in the driver's seat in that division start putting that in the rear view mirror and, and focusing on being healthy and, and playing your best best hockey come the end of the season and uh you, you've got a nice little run here before the all-star break to to really kind of pad that the tough game should be the la game because uh the abs play the night before in anaheim la yep. does yep. not play the night before yep. they're just chilling mm-hmm. the- that's the the two you're really looking at are the the second half of the back to back and the Boston mm-hmm. game where that's that's it. The Avs have been very good on the second that, half of back to backs, and they've historically been very good against Boston. Yeah, well, so. they've been incredible against Boston in Boston. Yeah. In Boston, yeah. I actually have no idea what their record against Boston in Denver is, but <laughs> when you go 500 at least against a team for 20 straight years, it's probably pretty good. <laughs> Tough to tough to drag that one down. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway, Avs next next handful of games looking like a light schedule. Yeah. It, well, and it's just you look you look at they're they're already two points clear of St. Louis and Nashville. Yep. In mm-hmm. the division, and still games in hand on both of three them. Three and if, four games in hand. Yes, yeah. Three and four games in hand, respectively. There. So, um, no. No, I think we should put. Can we put it? Can we put something on the bottom, uh, like the bottom third of our pod that says the ads are not trading for Mark Andre Fleury? <laughs> the the little ticker at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> that way, that way we can just every Point to the uh, bottom every show. <laughs> yeah. That way, when people are curious, like we can just get out ahead of it. <laughs> Um, the 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 Bruins used to smoke the Quebec Nordiques, like smoke them. I believe, and that. then they moved here, and it's it's been almost all abs. <laughs> it's it's pretty fucking crazy to even look at like the, the way it changes. It's really funny, actually. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. All good. No, so I uh, I think that that's it's it's just that this is going to be a really good opportunity for the Avs to put some serious uh, serious distance there because once you start, if they can build uh, a six to ten point lead, it gets hard to blow that lead. Yep. late in the year. I, so, I, it's not just hard to blow the lead. It gives the team flexibility, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, because then you can do things like rest a guy for a game if oh, you want. You Kale's can, banged up tonight or whatever, and you're not yeah, worried about it. You could say take Olympian to be Drew Hellison and sign him and put him in your NHL roster yep. and in the second half of the season and maybe play him down the stretch a little bit. Or give Justin Barron a few more games. You really want to get crazy with it? Maybe you try Shane Bowers on the forward side. All right, let's not get crazy. <laughs> I'm just I do, saying. I do kind of want to touch on uh, Annie, an eagle or two, though. Yeah, fire off. Um, we're year two into this little experiment. Um, Jean-Luc Foudy got drafted out of the OHL and did not go back. He's He's been a pro hockey player since. Now, this obviously, this is because of the COVID times that this happened. But, you know, after a really encouraging year last year, um, this season has just been fine. Like, it hasn't been bad, but it hasn't been amazing. Uh, how do we how do we feel about developing a guy in the AHL straight out of junior now? Because he's been kind of an interesting little test case. He's not a first-round guy. So all the past exemptions that we've talked about where, like, a guy like Bowen Byron would be allowed to yeah. go to the AHL or whatever would not have applied to him. He would have had to have gone back to the O. Um, so I, I'm, I'm curious. Um, how are we? How do we feel about the situation at this point? I'm all for it. Never had a problem with it. Like I've talked about a lot in Europe, they let kids as young as 16 play in their highest pro leagues. So I think the the North American side should allow it. Uh, certainly in the minor leagues uh, for players that are good enough to attract attention of a professional team. I, I have no problem with them developing at the AHL level. I understand if you commit to something like this, there's probably going to be that awkward changeover period where the AHL hasn't fully transitioned into the level of a developmental league that you would likely probably see it become if you committed to something like that. But I, I've i never had a problem with... I, 18 year old kids. I, I think they should be allowed to develop in the AHL if that's what they think the best pass for themselves is. 24 and 11, the Avalanche versus the Bruins all time. Not that's the franchise, good. but the Avalanche. 24 that's and 11. Good. That's pretty Sorry, good. Sorry, right I, I wasn't ignoring what you guys are saying. I was just like, all right, now I've got to get this figured out. 24 and 11. Uh, no, I've always been a massive fan of. Let the kids. I, I I hate the the rules that the NHL has around major junior and college and all that stuff. I, I think if 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 that kid can hang in the AHL and that's where you think it's best for that that player to play, let him play. Yep, agreed. And, and uh, uh, like obviously the conversation is that it's not for everyone. We saw clear as day. Oscar Lawson was not ready for the AHL this well, year. So this is my question, though, is that if you were to scrap that part of the AHL uh, or the NHL CHL agreement, yep. Um, look, Oscar Lawson would would Oscar Lawson been in the AHL on an AHL team that maybe didn't have as much forward talent sitting there? Maybe, maybe. But a guy like Jean Luc, I don't think Foodie would have been. A guy that you would have dropped into the AHL right away, but it, went, but it went well enough for him that we were like, "Hey, why not?" But now I'm wondering, like, would Foodie have been better off being able to go back and like absolutely elevate his game to a different level and be a dominant player who in the OHL who got puck touches like crazy because he's been a third, he's been a lot of a second and third line player for the Eagles in a lot of his time there. Yep, he has not been a. a a high minute, high usage guy, and I'm wondering is is that? I wonder if we'll look back on that and say that hurt his development, or is it 
more of preparing him for the role that he'll play in the NHL. Uh, Getting him comfortable not having as many puck touches, but finding a way to be successful in kind of that that three-ish C. Uh, also, he's played a lot of right wing, which is a, an area of weakness for the Avalanche system. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think I've, I I just – it's something that I – it's been on my mind lately. Like, the puck touches and the time on ice and – and I think did they they kind of shoot themselves in the foot developmentally here with this guy. I don't know that they shot themselves in the foot, but I think unfortunately no. the answer to your question is that it's probably both, right? Like it probably <laughs> did hurt him to not get one C time down in the OHL yeah. where he, where he could have played 20, 22 minutes a night and dominated and get some confidence and, and understand what his capabilities are. But at the same time, like you said, that's not the reality of the game he's going to be playing in the yeah. NHL, barring him blowing well, well, out of the water expectations. Two years in pro hockey experience instead, where he doesn't have to make that jump to the AHL next year. Yep. Right. We can we can start looking at him making the NHL jump in a year or two. Yep. Because his ELC has slid this whole time. Right. So it's not like the ads have an ELC problem here. They've still got they've still got the whole ELC and, that they should they should go. And you have uh, less of you have less of an AHL clock on that kid too. Even though he's played there two years, he's still only 20. Yeah. So. I mean, this is kind of like what they did. You know, this is Martin Kaut's situation. Yeah. Kind which of. doesn't inspire confidence because Martin Kaut hasn't turned out so far. Sure. Yeah. Um, it, and it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's maybe an impossible question to answer. Right. Because you end up oh, sitting definitely there and saying, is. you know, you don't know what the alternate universe looks like. Right, you can't right. own that bell, you know? And, and, you know, you sit there and you say, okay, well, is it more valuable for him to play way more against players that aren't as good, aren't as big, aren't as fast, but he's playing a ton or is it better for him to, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's an impossible question to answer. And um, to answer Jay's question for me, if you get rid of that part of the, you know, that the CHL, AHL agreement, I think you'd have a lot more kids. I think you'd have more kids from Europe that come over at a younger age now that there is a more direct path into pro hockey. Um, I, I think you'd still end up with a ton of talent. And again, it'd be at the team's discretion. So you would still see plenty of guys sent back to the CHL, uh, you know, in, in their D plus one year. Um, yeah. Or just opens the door for those. We talk about it all the time on this show and privately that, that you see players go back to the CHL all the time where it's like, they've got nothing to gain from that. They're going to go score 150 points again. It's not yeah, doing like, anything for them. It's not doing anything Byron's for them. Byron's and the Jonathan Durans right. and like, those are really easy examples. But a guy like Foodie was going to be an interesting test case. We see it happen all the time where – NHL teams hang on to a guy for a handful of games at the start of the year and then send him back to the junior team. Yeah. I don't see why you can't do that with the AHL all the same. Right. Right. It just, it just kind of, it opens up that tier for that next wave. Now your second and third rounders. Yeah. You give them a look in the AHL. Um, and then maybe you still send them back or, or maybe they kind of latch on and maybe it's, you know, becomes a nice alternative uh, you know, for, for kids that, that elect to go the college route to get the experience against the bigger, stronger, faster kids, this could actually end up keeping some kids in major junior hockey a year or two longer as they lead up to the draft. You know, I don't know. Um, so I, I think it'd be really interesting. I, I wish the NHL would would make some of those adjustments. And the biggest thing, I just fucking wish they'd let NCAA players at training camp. <laughs> yeah. yeah, NCAA rules are a nightmare i actually think i think that that's a genuine detriment to the yep. to the drafted kids like yeah <laughs> yep it, it's, it's rules about being an amateur player actively hurting a significant number of players that go through that i, I do mm-hmm. truly believe that yeah i mean you're just depriving them of the opportunity and it's not we're not talking about them playing games we're not talking about them you know yeah keep, keep anything, them out of preseason games like, if you want but like we're not talking about them doing anything but going to two weeks of training camp here like right. or or the uh prospect showcase stuff like yep right let those kids go and experience that they've been drafted they've earned that at least right let them go do stuff with the team that 
drafted them, right? Right, that has <laughs> invested in their future. Yep. Yeah, nobody nobody that's a, you know, a, a third round pick out of the CHL goes to training camp. Go, you know, goes to rookie camp, gets to stay for parts of training camp, then gets sent back and it's like, "Yep, I'm a pro hockey player now." It's like, right. "No, you went yeah. to a pro hockey camp and now you're you know, you're back at the amateur level." I, I just don't get why those same rules don't apply. Um again, if you want to keep it in that hey, they can't play in any official preseason games, fine, keep that. But let the kid like the fact that we had to wait as long as we did to see Kale McCarr truly live. Like we got to see him at the one rookie camp. Yeah. Like the fact that we had to wait as long as we did for a number four overall pick to be allowed at facilities. It's like, it's just silly, but well, and, and this is also, I think this, you could also tie this back into growing the game, market your players better. Yep. Put, put your, put your, most exciting talents, but your best players in front of your fans and yep. let them get in front of guys. If you have a top five pick that, that's not allowed to come within okay. a thousand feet well, of your organization for two years. like Right. Well, and, and how fun would it have been to have a guy like Kale McCarr, his second year at UMass, take part in All-Star Weekend yeah. as a college player? Going back to what we talked about earlier, have your, you know, have your top college players, have your top CHL players, and now start to grow the NCAA side of it. Yo, a CHL NCAA All Star game at the All Star game. That'd be sick. That would be awesome. That'd like be you want to, you want to talk about like like an outdoor game festivity. Yeah, wow, that's a where great it's one. like a weekend of outdoor games where you've got like that game, and then you have, I don't know, that's then you have an like alumni, a women's, women's, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yep. then you get a women's game, and that's and then. You cap it off with your KHL, NHL, All Star game sick. like against each That'd other. Okay, I'm sold. I can do Bring that. back the All Star game. We can have it again. <laughs> but we're we're talking about an All Star week at this point. I think. Like I, hey. three days, like three so, days. So man. so, but 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 here, but here is the other like honestly, my real thing. I would rather them do an All Star week ar- centered around events Same. like that than Agreed. the weekend that they do right now. Pause the season for yeah. a full week if you if, like. If you're actually going to do it, I'd rather you do that if it's filled with quality content and quality events than, um, yeah, and, totally. And, and the two players, days of the, nothing. And the players get the, they only have to be there for the events. They have to be there. So right, they still right. get their break. Like they you come in for a day or two, and then days. you fly out and go on your vacation for three yeah. days. Yeah. All, anyway, I'm absolutely here for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk, I want to talk about that. I wanted to talk about, uh, just touch on a little bit about the, uh, trade deadline. Cause I know people are fucking fanatical about it, <laughs> but I think that the Bowen Byram situation has made it a fascinating deadline for the avalanche. Yeah. It went from being like, ah, they're probably going to look for a depth forward to now they might need to be looking for a top four defenseman because, they don't they clearly don't want to play anybody. They have a very the Avalanche have a very obvious top three that they trust uh and that they that they think are the guys that they want to roll with. Byron was that fourth guy. He was getting those minutes until this situation has some clarity. Um I think that the Avs need to plan for life without him this year, just because you can't just keep holding the candle for the guy, right? Like you can't, you can't just keep holding out hope that he's going to be there. Now, obviously, it's two months to the deadline, so they do have some time to wait here. But are they in a position where they should go after a top four guy, or is this more Justin Barron territory? Should they bring I, I, Justin I, Barron up in the next couple of weeks and start trying to integrate him into into the lineup as a regular, or do you not do you not take the do you not shortcut his development? No, I, 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 he's, he's a pretty good AHL player already. So I wonder how much longer he needs to be there. I, 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 I can even agree with that sentiment, but I think the abs are going to get involved in the defenseman market either way. And I think that maybe all this stuff around Byram has maybe changed their target. I think they're going to look for a guy. I mean, that's a where middle, a middle slash. Right. I, 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 I thought all along they were going to maybe look for a guy that was a middle pairing, bottom pairing, flex type guy. Um, 
but with with the uncertainty around Byram, and then especially the way that we've seen it play out, where yeah, he's back for two, three games at 100%, and then suddenly at the drop of a hat, he's out of the lineup again. Um, I, I think I think a lot of it will kind of de- – well, maybe not even depending on where Dallas is because he's on an expiring deal. I don't think they expect Klingberg to resign here. I think Klingberg's in the conversation. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they called around on a guy like uh, Mark Giordano, um, Keith Yandel. Like, I think all of those guys that you're hearing as, their, as the defensive rental names, I, I think they'll be sniffing around on all of them regardless of what we hear with Bo and Byram. Um, no, I don't think they'll go out and get Nemeth again. I think that was kind of the, a failed experiment last year. But I will tell um, you, and I think I've said this on the show before, but I know for a hard fact there are people in the Avalanche organization who thought Patrick Nemeth was their best player against Vegas. That's a hell of a thing to think. Um, <laughs> Just goes to show you, it takes a village, right? Everybody has to have an opinion. <laughs> yeah. But but no, I I think that maybe it elevates them from saying, okay, we want a guy who can kind of, you know, flex between that bottom pairing and that middle pairing to no, we want a guy that we feel is pretty set as a well, as a middle pairing guy that if you get Byron back, suddenly you've got so you know, here's here's part of why I think they should be active in this on the deadline is it's not just Byron, right? At this point, you can't trust Ryan Murray to stay healthy at all based on the injuries he's already had this year. And you still have the lurking ideas in the back of your head of how healthy can EJ stay. Yes. So you're, you're talking about a lot of defensemen on this team that you're not super confident in staying healthy through the entire season. And And beyond that, you're in trouble because McDonald's already hurt. Yep. And, uh, Curtis McDermott has already burned through his. Well, maybe this will work. <laughs> it has not worked on the defensive side. And, that's for yeah, sure. yeah, because they're like we talked about yesterday. They played him as a defenseman, and he didn't play a single shift after the Jordan Greenway incident. They yeah. didn't play him. They won't. Not, they not once. Not one. They they won't. They were not comfortable in a close hockey game. They were not comfortable giving Curtis McDermott forty seconds. Yep. If that's how you yeah. feel, like you cannot have another injury then. Well, yeah, I, I was going to say the other thing to keep in mind with that, though, is that you are three injuries deep before you're playing that guy. Right. On but, defense. But moving forward. If you're right. expecting Byram and Murray right. to be out indefinitely. Like, well, Byram, no, and, and that's, and that's why I was just saying – Jacob McDonald That's why I was just saying that I think that they get involved in that market regardless. Giordano's because if you, name. yeah, if you can have your first guy coming off the bench, if your lineup is fully healthy and you're saying, cool, Jack Johnson is our seventh guy. I think everyone feels pretty comfortable with that, that if you need to put someone in on your bottom pairing with the way he's played this year, has it been great? Absolutely not. But I think sure you're very comfortable putting Jack Johnson on that third pairing, you know, yeah. if you need to in a, in a playoff game. Well, and, and um, him playing as much as he has, you, you know, that he's comfortable too. Right. Everybody, right. everybody would, would, would understand. Like that's a situation where you're like, okay, I and, get it. And Mark, Mark Giordano is one that I think makes a lot of sense to me. Seattle can eat the salary cap. Um, you know, they're not going to need a ton in return for him. You, you should have so the assets pretty- for that. And, and, he can seriously you you i think you go out and acquire a guy like that saying we are planning on it being ej and giordano on that bottom pairing and then if it has to be giordano playing up in the bow byram spot i think i think you feel pretty good about that and that kind of gives you your you know everyone talks about every year oh they need a guy to rally around well there you go and then add uh fill the thrill up front and <laughs> I'm I'm in on I'm in on Kessel. Let me let me uh so the abs the reality here, the abs are gonna be pretty asset poor at this deadline. They don't have a first, they don't have a second, they really don't want to give up top prospects. Unless they're dipping into their 2023 pool pool, right? It's gonna be tough for them to have a lot of value. Um so my my curiosity here is more of uh 
if you if they only have the assets for one bigger move. Mm. Which is it a defenseman or a forward that you prioritize? I know my answer, but which one would you guys prioritize? And let's assume that it's when I say when, when I say uh, a bigger move, let's say a top four defenseman where if Byram comes back, you're rich as fucking ass. Like your defense is so good, right? But if he doesn't, you're still okay. You still have a top four that you trust. Or that other top six forward where Nachushkin drops down to your third line and you really get the help that you need in added depth there. I mean, it's it's – it's such a tough question to answer right now today because I think sure. where they're at in two months will be a little bit more. Of course. You know, be if a you, lot more if, clarity. if yeah, you still obviously. haven't seen McDonald jumping back in, if Byram still hasn't even started getting back on the ice, then obviously you need to, you know, prioritize the four because, or the, excuse me, the defenseman. Cause that's, that's really where it all comes in. Do you probably feel more comfortable with your depth up front? Yeah, probably. You've got a couple guys that, that you can call up that you feel some level of comfort plugging in the lineup. As we're on defense, I, I don't know if you, you know, you've got that same kind of trust in your depth. Um, it really, you're at this point, if there's no Byron, there's no McDonald, your depth, you start to think is more like Justin Barron and maybe Drew Ellison. Right, right. And, and, and so, and so, are you comfortable with? Two kids who are not transcendent Macar like talents. And and that's where I think a lot of it will also come down to what do these trades cost? Because if you're trying to go out and add like a um, you know, a Klingberg, how much are you comfortable giving away to a division opponent? Cause they're not gonna care too much about sending John Klingberg to you because they're really not going to have to deal with it because he'll probably be off the abs roster come next season. Um, so are you wanting to send, you know, prospects you feel really good about in the division to play against for the next 10 years? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think the abs are going to be a really interesting situation. I think that I, I personally, this is based on nothing other than feelings. Uh, I, I think they're going to, I do. I think it's going to be Kessel, a Kessel like player, and uh, Keith Yandel, Mark Giordano, I, yeah, type I, guy. I do think you're right that it depends on cost. But if it's going to be a bigger move, I think it's going to be on the defensive side. On the forward side, it feels like ah, just give a fourth yep. for Nemesnikov again and be done right, right. It. But yeah, if if you only, if you can truly only make one work, I think they prioritize the D. But I think they try to get a couple moves done, like we've seen them in the last couple of years, something that's cheap. On the cheaper side, that you can plug multiple holes, um, I think that's what they do. Because I think I think Joe likes this group. All right, I like the answers. Any final thoughts on on today's show, boys? Don't think so. It'll Actually, be fun in, uh, next couple of days. I I like that our conversation accidentally turned into well. In two months, this will be a lot easier to say. <laughs> Yep. It's always kind of my point, like why I don't like to talk about the deadline this early. Because well, you're just it, shooting it, in the dark. Yeah, because you don't know what the reality of your team is in two months. Well, and especially when you're talking about a team like this trying to fill holes, it's like, well, which hole is bigger at the time? <laughs> yep. You know? That defensive hole could be completely sealed in two months for all we know. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah, you, you suddenly, suddenly, yeah, all those guys that we just named off are back healthy and jumping into the lineup and you know contributing, rolling in and out, and suddenly you say, well, cool, we you know we did our own you know from internal, we had our own depth trade deadline where you added Ryan Murray, you add uh, uh, McDonald, yep, and all that stuff, and suddenly like cool, that was our deadline thing. Now we can reallocate those assets up front. It, you know, if people want names, then. You know, th there's a bunch of names that I think are on the abs like board of interest, but there's just so many. Bird. Yeah, th there's just so many variables. And and with with where the abs roster is now, they I mean, they know what their windows look like. They know that they've got a bunch of guys leaving in UFA at the end of the season. Uh, you better believe that they are making those lists and they are they're going to be in on a lot. 
I'm not saying that they're going to pull off any big deals, but if there's any player that they think can help make them better, they're, they're at least going to call and see, see what the cost would be. All right. So, you know, you'll always be able to find more trade deadline talk on the abs from us when the trade deadline actually starts to become relevant. Uh, thank you everyone for watching, listening, however you consume the podcast. We appreciate all of you so very much. We will be back live pregame and postgame tomorrow. Hope you all will check us out then and the day after because the abs are going back to back again. So, uh, hopefully you join us. Hopefully it's a fun time until then. We'll talk to you on the next one.